Welcome to your computer AV design class. Today we're going to see some features managing SolidWorks. We're going to see Sweet Boss Base, Ripple Boss Base, and some other operations that I will explain later on this topic. So as always, to start we have to open the program, well the software, and to create a drawing with the selected plane that we want to start. I am going to start making a circle because we're going to use the feature sweep boss base. And that feature what will allow us is to follow a trajectory within a line in a circle. The circle with the width or the thickness of that cylinder line, uh, tube or hose maybe and in the line will be the trajectory for that hose so we have to adjust the plane in which we are going to draw the line it has to be perpendicular to the initial drawing in this case to the initial circle and it can be a line, but it will be not like it, it will be useless because that will be a cylinder. So I will use a curve, and in a curve, and this curved line will be used as trajectory for this weird shape. Obviously, you have to be planning your shell shapes beforehand. But in this case, in order to show the feature. I will leave it like that. So click uh, the feature sweep boss base and first of all you have to select the drawing with the circle and then the trajectory or the line. And if you see it will create this shape. So I think it is very easy to create this type of parts but as you can see it has some problems because of the trajectory and the thickness of the circle so let's create another one so click again one of the planes in the circle in this case I am going to use the top plane and I am going to draw a circle a very basic circle I will just adjust the dimensions so has that thickness that I want and at the project tree I'm going to select the plane remember that the project is at the left it can be hidden so uh, look for it if it is hidden it has a little arrow shape that you can click and it will go back so Right now I'm going to create an, an arc and this arc will allow us to make a more regular shape than, than before. So just find in the center and I will create this arc. So as you see it is a it is now like a semicircle and Let's, let's click sweet base both and there it is you select the circle and the trajectory and you create this shape you can use it to create several forms like a I don't know maybe a, a join join it with a, another or to draw within this shape. What I'm doing here is showing you that you can fuse some elements besides just making this figure. Like this, I'm just creating a box in, in that plane, in that um, in that circular plane, and when I get the feature done, I will select fuse at the menu and I will get the, the two extruded parts fused together and I can add 
some roundness and that fillet will be um, like more natural if you if you can say like that so this is just an example of what you can do in SolidWorks and let's create a new part to do another another example of another um, feature I would use the Revolve Boss Base feature and as you can see in the animation it tells us uh, basically what it's doing it's like cutting a cake in some parts depending on the degrees and what you are going to do is to create a drawing with a rectangle and select the feature revolve boss base and select one of the lines in which you want it to be creating this circular shape like a cake shape so I am just adjusting the dimensions and I will go to features revolve boss base and just select one line that you want as a guide so um, here I'm just seeing the, the planes and I miss my feature so I will do it again just let me adjust that again and yeah there it is so select one side or one line and you will get this cake shape so if you move the arrow you will get the degrees in which you want to cut this cylinder or this part of the ship so it, it is a very simple 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 feature and i think it can be useful i haven't used it to be honest but um yeah you can use it to do things like, like this part so once again I am going to create a new part so I can show you a very useful tool that I like to use in some projects basically in all projects so I will create once again a circle and I will show you how to use the drill or the whole wizard where we can use holes that uh, a drip will do and basically you have to extrude your, your base and or your part and select some points where you want the holes to be and then make them and after that I will show you an easier way to make the holes but I will go the long way creating each one of the holes and then I will show you how to make uh, make it easier with some uh, circular patterns so here we have the part and once it has done it has been done you should go to features and at the features you will find the whole wizard oh what what I am doing here is that I am creating some points and giving those points the dimensions that I want so I can uh, place them where I want the hole to be because we need this in order to use the whole wizard so what I want to achieve here is that you look that it is like a waste of time to do all of this when later on we can do it easier with a circular pattern so yeah I'm just giving those dimensions and the separations that I want the holes to be and I think this is a waste of time so but I, I will do it to show you so as I see this is a waste of time 
I think I will use an easier method and you have to create the point and yeah, place it in the in the drawing or in the bar where you want the hole to be and after that you are going to create the circular pattern so select the point what you want to replicate and at the left at the feature manager you have the separation the degrees of separation or the dimensions and you can change all of that the number of holes or replicate or, or yeah the number of clones or repetitions for the feature that you are going to to repeat and to decrease uh, you can use it in a full circular motion or just in half of the circle or whatever you need it to be so as you see we created a lot of or several points it is easier than be measuring each one of them and this reduces errors so we're going to use a whole wizard and we have the standards for the wizard we have ISO, NC, DIN all of these standards so if you need one just select it I would use the international standard organization and I will use an M8 and here we have the tolerances and the adjustments of the of the screw that we want to include and basically that's it you're going to select one of the points or all of them and create the holes and depending on the type of screw that you want to add is the type of hole that we're going to get in, in this case this is a, a plain head screw so the, the screws will not go uh, over the part so it will look flat so it's a flat screw uh, flat head is a screw so as you can see I have to select each one of them in order to create the holes and you can see that they went all over the part you can adjust that when making the holes at the feature manager at the left okay another thing you can do is to create one hole just one and then replicate it with this circular pattern again but this time it's going to be for the feature so select the, the face that you want to do the, the holes and just change the degrees of separations that you want the holes to be and basically that's it you, you get this these features done and these characteristics is written down there at the feature manager and as you can see you can control the number of holes or features that you want to replicate it is not only for holes it can be done for everything but I am using holes because it is easier to see and there you have it very easy so now what I am going to show you is how to use the toolbox the toolbox is a special feature in SOLIDWORKS where you can add the screws automatically and the standards is the screws that you want to add and they will be added to all of the holes that you have done and they will add also the um, conditions uh, for them to not move uh, in this case what I am doing is showing you what you don't have to do this is wrong because we are doing this in the same part as the model so we have to 
do this in an assembly. In an assembly, sorry. And that is because uh, we are like treating in here the part as if it is an assembly and it is not, it's just a part. So uh, this will get some errors when getting the screws into the holes because it will think it is like one part and they will fuse the results and this will not allow us to make an exploded view later on and I think uh, some adjustments at the assembly will be lost so don't do this in the same part just create another document as an assembly part and it will be okay. So as you can see, it can be done, but as you can see, the screw is not the correct size. That's because we're doing it at the same part. So let's go to create an assembly from the drawing, out of the part, sorry. And what this will allow us is to use the existing part that we have and drag it or add it to the assembly. And when we have this assembly, we can use the two books and select the hole that we want the screw to be. And as you can see, now we have the standards appearing. So we have an M8, and at the left, the feature manager, we have the characteristic of that screw, the long and everything like that. So just one thing to have in mind is that you have to select the correct face in order for the screws to be correctly placed or they will end up in weird positions. In this case, I am selecting the, like the slope of the face so the screws get in, in a correct position. So as you can see, we created all of the screws in just one move very easy and you don't have to create the screws or find them at the internet SOLIDWORKS already have this feature added at the software so it is very useful and there you have it, all of the screws are placed the only thing here and the mistake that I'm making is that I am not making the screws the long that I need them, they are like not doing anything, right? So I need them to pass the part in order for me to attach another part at the end of this one. So well, what I'm going to do is to create um, a new screw. I'm going to erase one of them and add another one. So I already erased that one, so I will go to the screw, so, sorry, to the toolbox that is at the right of the screen, remember? And you have to activate that at the uh, SOLIDWORKS complements before doing it. If not, the toolbox will not appear, remember that part. The complements are at the top of the screen. And as you can see here, at the left, at the feature manager, I have all of the dimensions and the, and the length of the screw. So you can change it and you can create different types of lengths and screws. And even the head has changed. So that's it. I think it's a very useful feature and remember that you can only do this when making an assembly so that is very important so I hope you have learned something and I I will just show you one another feature before we left and this is the sectional view so we can see that that length of the screws so in those little icons at the top, uh, top of the screen 
we can see an icon that is a part divided at the middle and we can select it there it is and we can access again to that feature so that will be all thanks and see you at the next class